Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel here. And I'm your host, Jimmy Smith. I am delighted to have you on board. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is a channel dedicated to wine education for mainly the WSET courses. So I provide supplementary revision tools like videos and other things to help you gain confidence for your WSET examinations. Now this video is part of the wine making section, so wine production for the WSET diploma, the level four. Uh, and we're starting a new series here on general wine making options. So not going into huge specifics, but talking about the major wine making options across wine. And it's part one of three. Uh, so this is oxygen in the mustard wine, minimizing oxygen. So talking more about sort of anaerobic primary style wines in this section. As always, if you have any comments or questions or concerns, you can get in touch with us here at Wine with Jimmy actually quite easily by commenting on this video on YouTube. Please make sure that you click subscribe to get all of the information and updates on a weekly basis. But you can also use the social media that you see at the bottom of every slide or direct at the website www wine with jimmy it's actually what you can see at the bottom of that slide that's where you'll find my e-learning portal which is a wonderful resource for those of you studying your wset where you will find things like exclusive video content more like this but also things like revision sessions multiple choice questions short written questions and so on and so on so as I mentioned, this is going to be part one of three. This is available as free content, part two and three only on my e-learning portal. And here we'll be looking at minimizing oxygen in the winemaking stage. Oxygen is responsible for a number of reactions that will occur between the compounds in the grape must or wine. And for this reason, of course, it can have a huge, significant effect on the wine style, but also, of course, the quality of the wine. Um, oxygen itself is not actually very reactive with many compounds in both the must and wind, but the reactions it does take part in can create products that then will go on to react with the must and the wine. So it really is a bridging gap. These are what we call oxidation reactions. Uh, so the timing and the amount of oxygen exposure is, of course, very important. And it can make the difference between what we would consider a positive effect on the wine and, of course, a negative effect on the wine. So therefore, as a winemaker, it is a very essential that you understand the role of oxygen in the winemaking stage. OK, so let's start to talk about a bit about the oxidation, oxidative reactions to begin with. So the products of oxidation reactions may actually contribute to some unwanted aromas to the wine. So, for example, acetaldehyde, as you can see at the top of that slide, this is um, from the oxidation of ethanol, can give an appley apple kind of pippy character and nuttiness. So that's what you see in the backdrop of this picture and in the foreground. And that can be, of course, very much unwanted. In certain stars of the world, in the world, of course, things like Fino, Manthania, Sherry, it's actually a very key component because the wine's a bit more stable due to the high alcohol. But uh, in a lot of more um, still wines, dry wines, non-fortified, this can be, of course, a problem. Also, the colour of white wines can turn darker, as you'll see in the wonderful array of colours in the bottom of that slide there. Uh, first of all, becoming gold and eventually brown with increased oxidation. So therefore, white wines will tend to need greater protection to stop this from happening, certainly because there is a, a market for clarity 
a market for purity in the appearance of wines today. Uh, so often it is a negative if the wine has a darker color, and certainly if it's wine for the mass market, of course. Phenolic compounds in red wines have antioxidative effects, which means they can actually absorb oxygen before such effects are found in the wine style. So that, of course, is why red wines are much more protective of themselves due to their antioxidative tannic effects. OK, so um, we're talking a bit about primary lead wines to begin with. So therefore, oxygen is generally a threat to the production of fresh, fruity wines. Uh, many of the aroma compounds that give these fresh fruity wines their style, so for example the thiols in Sauvignon Blanc, break down in the presence of oxygen and this could lead to a loss of fruitiness. Um, so that's the thiol, the methoxypyrazine characteristic in Sauvignon. This is generally why it is considered that most Sauvignon Blancs are not actually that capable of long-term aging. There, of course, are some that disagree with this, but generally speaking, more mass-produced style Sauvignon Blancs are better consumed younger if you want more aromatic compounds, more volatile compounds. Um, the grapes are often kept chilled until they will reach the winery as a safety measure for protecting the grapes. And once there, all efforts are made to keep the grapes and juice away from oxygen. This process is sometimes referred to as protective or anaerobic winemaking. OK, and I've got a nice picture there of a lot of lovely primary compounds like fruit floral perfume uh, and then the big caution oxygen sign there to say that, of course, it can be an issue. So let's talk about further steps to minimize oxidation. So one thing is by avoiding ullage in the vessels. Ullage, as you'll see from the word at the bottom there, is the headspace of air between the wine and the top of the container. So maybe the wine is not filled up too much in the barrel and that space, that gap in the top is what we call the ullage. It can be avoided by ensuring that the vessels are filled up to the top, a process that this gentleman here in this picture is carrying out, so topping up. So you'll have other barrels which are utilized to then fill up these barrels that are maturing. Um, now, vessels that are not completely airtight, such as those made out of wood, there may be a gradual loss of liquid through evaporation. Sometimes we call this the angel's share. Therefore, these vessels should, of course, be topped up regularly with more wine to avoid ullage. OK, uh, so that is avoiding ullage. Then we've got the use of inert gases. So gases such as nitrogen, the major gas in our atmosphere, carbon dioxide, which have both been identified at the top of your picture there, but also more expensive inert gases like argon, which are commonly used in wine preservation systems today, such as Coravan, they can be used to flush out oxygen from vessels, pipes, and machinery, so things like presses, for example. Uh, these gases, of course, being inert, will not react with the compounds in the wine. Inert gases can also be used to fill that headspace, the ullage within vessels, and I, I'm sort of symbolizing this to you here in this picture. Uh, and this means that the air, the oxygen within the air, will not actually come in contact with the wine due to the layer of protection which has been pumped into the top of the vat. The addition of sulfur dioxide is, of course, very important as an antioxidant. I'm not going to talk about it too much here because part three really focuses on that. So um, please make a little note in your in your studies that uh, we're going to talk extensively about the role of sulfur dioxide in part three. 
And then uh, the use of certain vessels. So we call these impermeable containers. So therefore protecting against oxygen. Stainless steel and rather thick concrete vessels, often which are lined in the inside with things like epoxy resin, these are impermeable to oxygen. Whereas, of course, wooden vessels actually allow a gentle ingress of oxygen, a little bit of oxygen effect to it. Also, the use of glass, even in winemaking and things like plastic as well. But glass bottles with screw caps can minimize exposure to oxygen during storage, of course. And that's what you see on the right hand side of your picture just there. And our real final slide here is really talking about temperatures. So a way of minimizing oxidation is with cool and constant temperatures. Cool temperatures will slow the rate of oxidation reactions. Hence the reason for maturing wine in relatively cold cellars or picking grapes early in the morning so the fruit of course is not warm it is cool it's kind of using nature's refrigeration technique and that really is a way of slowing down oxidation reactions um, so grapes are picked at night of course when it is cooler uh, and the effect of oxygen is reduced uh, as chemical reactions occur more slowly at reduced temperatures Okay, so that's the first part of oxygen in winemaking, talking really mainly about minimizing oxygen uh, in winemaking. Part two, we'll be looking at utilizing oxidation in a positive sense through controlled oxidation. Now, this will only be available to members of the Wine with Jimmy e-learning portal. Please go across there and sign up where you'll have a huge wealth of videos to help you. Um, we put about, uh, for the diploma, probably somewhere about 20% of free videos up on YouTube, but that means there's 80% of exclusive content just waiting there for you to unlock, unlock and watch. Plus, there's, of course, lots of other content there in terms of mock questions and, and so on to help you with your studies. As always, we'd like your feedback or if you have any comments, questions or concerns, you can get in touch via the comments section here on YouTube or by the social media you see at the bottom of every slide or, of course, direct by the website winewithjimmy.com. Otherwise, uh, if you do find yourself in the United Kingdom in the wonderful London town, you can come and see me. Uh, you know I have schools and bars, so come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you so much. See you soon. Goodbye.